Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Dr. Teeth. Today we are going to learn about the posterior superior alveolar nerve block. Now this nerve block is also known as the tuberosity block and the zygomatic block. So you can have questions in examination on any of these names like they can ask you to explain the posterior superior alveolar nerve block or tuberosity block, zygomatic block. All right. Now, first, let us try to understand what all structures are anesthetized when we give this block. So, the maxillary third molar, maxillary second molar, and also the maxillary first molar. But here we have an exception in the maxillary first molar. That is the mesiobuccal root. It is not anesthetized. Why? Because only in 77% cases, the PSN nerve innervates the mesobuccal root of the first molar also. So, if not PSA, which nerve is innervating it? The middle superior alveolar nerve is innervating it. And it has been found that 28% of the specimen examined had middle superior alveolar innervation. So, in such cases, after giving the PSA nerve block, we may need to give a supraperiosteal nerve block. Now, apart from these teeth, the buccal periodontium and the bone that is overlying these teeth are also anesthetized. So, this is an important viva question. You can be asked in the viva that which areas are anesthetized by the PSA nerve block. So, the answer will be the maxillary molars with the exception of the mesobuccal root of the first molar. Also, the buccal alveolar process of the maxillary molar including the overlying structures like the periosteum, connective tissue and the mucous membrane. So, now we know the area that is anesthetized. Now, we have to understand how it is anesthetized. How are we going to inject our anesthetic solution? Now, let us suppose this is our patient and we have to give the left PSA nerve block. Now, for the left PSA nerve block, a right-handed doctor should sit at a 10 o'clock position. On the other hand, if we had to give a right PSA nerve block, then the right-handed doctor would sit at 8 o'clock position facing the patient. Now, we will adjust the patient's position so that the maxillary occlusal plane will be at 45 degree angle to the floor. Now in our case we are taking a 10 o'clock position. Now at the 10 o'clock position our left arm will pass around the head of the patient and we will be palpating that area using our left hand to be specific the left forefinger. So how are we going to proceed? The doctor will move his left forefinger over the mucobuccal fold in a posterior direction from the bicuspid area until the zygomatic process of the maxilla is reached. As you can see here, now our finger will rest in a concavity in the mucobuccal fold. Now, if you haven't given the PSA nerve block ever in your life, just see these landmarks in your mouth itself. Use your forefinger and try to palpate in front of the mirror. You will find a concavity in the mucobuccal fold. Now, once we have done this, we will rotate the left forefinger. So, now I am showing you the frontal view of the same case, right? So, now you can see we have our finger like this. So, we have rotated our finger so that our fingernail is adjacent to the mucosa. And it is still in contact with the posterior surface of the zygomatic process. Now remember you have to keep your finger in contact with the zygomatic process. And you have to lower your hand and you have to lower your hand so that the cheek is properly out of the way. You can ask the patient to close his mouth a little bit so that the cheek can be easily moved. So this position of the finger is the exact direction in which our needle will go. Now before injecting, we have to dry that area and we have to use a suitable antiseptic solution, paint that 
antiseptic solution in that area before the needle prick. We will be using a 27 gauge short needle. We will be seeing why we are using a short needle just in a while. After loading the syringe, hold it in a pen grasp and we have to insert it into the tissue in a line that is parallel with our index finger. Okay, and when it goes to the destination, it will bisect the fingernail. Now, one question is how much you should insert. The distance should be half to three fourth inch and the direction will be upward, inward and backward. Very important point, aspirate in two planes before injecting. Few things to keep in mind, you have to orient the bevel of the needle towards the bone. Otherwise, it will be very unpleasant for the patient. Now, coming on to the depth of the insertion, how much deep can we go? Now, in adult who have a normal size skull, we can go to a depth of 16 mm. So, in case you just have a long needle whose average length is 32 mm, you have to insert it half in the tissue. But if you are using a short needle, which is recommended to avoid complications, it is around 20 mm long. So, in that case, 4 mm of that needle should be visible outside. That means 16 mm is inside. Remember, in the PSA nerve block, hematoma formation is a potential complication. So, we have to avoid the hematoma formation. If the patient is younger or if the patient is a child, just penetrate 10 to 14 mm. We have to deposit 0.9 to 1.8 ml of the anesthetic solution. Now we have given our injection. What will be the signs and symptoms? This PSA nerve block does not have any subjective symptom. The patient will not be able to make out or tell you any symptom. Why? Because this area is quite unreachable for the patient. So in this we don't have subjective symptoms. We do have objective symptoms for sure. You can use an instrument to check the anesthesia. So two important things we have learnt about the PSA nerve block. First of all, we have to control the depth of the needle penetration because it will affect us in two ways. First of all, it can change the extent of the anesthesia. Like if our anesthesia is adequate or not, Secondly, over penetration can lead to hematoma formation. So keep that in mind. Another viral question, why do we have hematoma? That hematoma is because of the pterygoid plexus of veins. So the needle, it inserts into that pterygoid plexus of veins. Also, the maxillary artery may be perforated though it is rare. One more disadvantage is that this area is so far inside that you cannot apply pressure in this area to minimize the hemorrhage. Now, if in case the position of a needle is not proper and in case you have deposited the solution lateral to the desired location, what will happen? We can have mandibular anesthesia because the mandibular division of the fifth cranial nerve, it is located just lateral to the PSA. So, if you move the needle towards the lateral side and inject, the mandibular anesthesia can happen instead of the PSA. So, to summarize, PSA nerve block anesthetizes the pulp of the maxillary molars except the musibuccal root of the maxillary first molar in 28% of cases. In addition, the buccal alveolar process of the maxillary molar and the overlying structures like the periosteum, connective tissue, mucous membrane will also get numbed or anesthetized. Contraindication is if the patient has a risk of hematoma or if the patient is taking drugs that can increase bleeding. In those cases, periodontal ligament injection is recommended or supraperiosteal injection is recommended. So I guess this was all the important information about the PSA nerve block. Do let me know in the comment section below if you found this video helpful. And also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It would be great if you join channel membership to help support the channel. 
if you don't wish to join it's absolutely all right you can still help me by sharing my videos and letting other students know about dr t so i will see you in the next video take very good care of yourself allah hafiz